Good day, students. You are welcome to a fresh episode of Physics on School on Hair. Uh, it's always a good time to be with you, uh, knowing that uh, you are glued to your TV set uh, with your pen, your paper, and uh, your mind a lot to receive our uh, lectures. Uh, today, we're going to continue um, on the topic we've been discussing for a while, and that's um, electric charge. Electric uh, charge. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at another dimension. Uh, to static electricity, where we're going to have to be considering uh, the force of attraction between two charges uh, placed, in an, in a, in, placed in an electric field. And then uh, we're going to have to also examine a law, uh, it's a very popular law today, and that is the Coulomb's law, Coulomb's law of uh, force of attraction, and then its relationship, and then how it's um, similar to the universal law of gravitation. So we're going to have to see all of that today. All right, so if you are ready, I'm ready. Uh, get your pen and your paper and then uh, let's start our uh, work today. All right, so uh, electric force under Coulomb's law. We've talked about um, uh, electric force a bit. We've talked about charges, their positions, the force of attraction, uh, and then repulsion as the case may be as far as uh, uh, charges, attraction between charges uh, is concerned. Okay, now, but this uh, force of attraction, we have not actually been able to ascertain uh, the magnitude how much force exists? What's the magnitude of the force of attraction or repulsion between two, uh, semi, I mean, opposites and uh, like charges are in that order? Okay, so now this force can actually be measured. So we say we can measure the force of attraction or repulsion between charges, say charge Q1 and Q2, because we're going to have to be using uh, uh, the small letter Q or the capital letter Q for for charges. So this uh, force can actually be measured okay already you can see uh, these two charges here we charge q1 and q2 uh, you can see the arrow pointing this uh, end showing that they are repelling each other actually because uh, they are similar charges they are positive uh, charges okay now this force of repulsion somewhere in between air that seems to be repelling uh, the the charge from uh, each other is what we are saying can actually be measured so how this is measured, we're going to have to look at it. And then the law governing the measurement of this force of attraction between two charges we're going to see today. All right. So um, when we, like I was saying that uh, we can actually measure the force of attraction between two charges. Now, when we do that, it has been discovered, uh, it has been uh, observed experimentally, that uh, this force of attraction between two charges uh, is proportional that is, it has a direct relationship. So it's directly proportional to each of the charges. And apart from this direct relationship with each of the charges, it has an inverse relationship with the distance between the charges. Okay, so we say this, um, this force uh, is uh, directly proportional to each of the charges, and it is inversely proportional to the distance between them. And apart from this, it is directed uh, along the line between them. So this force of attraction is directed along the line between them. So three major points are important uh, in determining the force of attraction between uh, two charges, whether uh, similar or like charges placed in an electric field. One is that this force of attraction is directly proportional to each, I mean, to the magnitude of each of the charge charges, and then it is inversely proportional to the distance between the charges, and then it is uh, also directed uh, along the line between between them. Okay, so those are uh, the facts uh, the, that have been discovered uh, on experiments as far as uh, the force of attraction between two charges placed in an electric field is uh, is concerned. Okay, so you just have a uh, charge Q1, uh, Q2 there uh, in an electric field and then uh, you see, uh, right, these are similar charges so they're probably repelling each other and then here we have uh, unlike charges, this is a positive charge and then this is a negative charge, you can see this, the negation sign. So these two are directed towards each other. They are directed, so these two are actually attracting each other uh, while these ones are repelling they are repelling each other so this force of repulsion uh, and attraction between the charges are uh, our major concern for for today now in symbols in symbols because we have said that the force of attraction is directly proportional to each of the charge and the inversely proportional to 
uh, the, the, the distance between the charge and then uh, if you actually want to state the Coulomb's law uh, the way it is we say that uh, it states that the force of attraction between two charges placed uh, in an electric field is directly proportional to the product of the, ch the charges and the uh, inverse proportional to the square of their distance apart so that's the the full statement of the Coulomb's law the force of attraction between two charges in an electric field is directly proportional to the product of the charges and then uh, inverse proportional to the square of their distance apart so in symbols all that grammar that i just talked about now are uh, is put in the symbol okay so in symbol the magnitude of the force is expressed as f is equal to k uh into the magnitude of q1 and q2 we are q1 is a charge one q2 is a charge two over r squared r is uh the distance between between the two charges so uh, we say that f the mass the force of attraction is proportional to q1 q2 over r squared now this k is just uh, the constant of proportionality okay you know when you convert your proportionality sign to equality sign uh, we introduce some constant okay so this k here is a uh, uh, some constant uh, of uh, proportionality so i want you to just take your pen right now and make a note of this you're going to need it very often okay f is equal to kq1 q2 over r squared uh, somehow it's similar to the law of gravitation we're going to see uh, about that uh, soon you know your f is equal to gm1 m2 over r squared and so that so we're going to see about that soon you'll just make a note of your f is equal to k q1 q2 over r squared all right you have to keep in mind that we have put the magnitude here okay those are parallel lines uh, it's talking about the magnitude of the charge such that uh we do not consider whether uh it's, it's a negative charge or it's a positive charge okay so what we are particularly uh interested about is the the, the magnitude the magnitude of um, of the charge so you have your f is equal to k q1 q2 over r squared we are your k is a uh, constant of proportionality now this uh, this first law that we just talked about was first studied by Coulomb in 1785 and so uh, it is uh, just uh, uh, in a, a common sense guy that uh, the, the, the law be named after Coulomb itself okay so the essence the name Coulomb comes from the, the guy who uh, worked on this law who actually propounded it, discovered this law and put it together for us to begin to work with okay so the guy is named Coulomb so we call the law Coulomb's law the law is called Coulomb's law. So again, the Coulomb's law states that the force of attraction between two charges uh, placed in an electric field is directly proportional to the products of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart. So you have your F proportional to uh, Q1, Q2 over R squared, where you have the proportionality sign changing to F is equal to K, K, Q1, Q2 over R squared. I hope that is noted. All right. So uh, let's just uh, move quickly. So, like I told us, that the k there is some constant of proportionality, and uh, of course, it's a constant. So, each time you have a problem, I mean, uh, when we have a, a calculations involving a uh, force of attraction between charges in an electric field, we are always given the value of that constant k. Uh, it's, it has a numerical value of uh, 8.9875109 Newton per meter square per Coulomb squared. Okay, and um, sometimes uh, this can be taken to uh, four places of decimal, which will now give us 8.9876. Okay, but then uh, it's not for you to cram the, uh, the value of k. There are so many constants, okay, in physics. So you don't have to cram any constants. Uh, uh, when you have problem, I mean, questions uh, in examination, uh, the constant are always given. Okay, so don't bother your head about cramming the value of, uh, I mean, the numerical value of the constant k. Okay, but for record purpose, take a note of it. The k, uh, the value of k there is uh, 8.987551109 Newton per meter square per Coulomb square. It has units, okay? It has units. Newton per meter squared per Coulomb square. Okay, so that's what we refer to as the Coulomb constant. Now, even though we know that we can write down a vector form of this force, it is easier to just... Uh, use the equation for the magnitude right because we know because of the polarity because the charge we have a positive charge we have a negative charge so uh it is possible 
for us to to want to write the vector form you know the vector form will show us the direction of the charges will show us the repulsion the, rep uh, the attraction okay but uh, we are not particularly interested in that okay uh, what we want to know is the magnitude of the force of attraction so we just uh, ignore all the uh, the trouble the vector form is going to be giving us and then we just simply use the equation for the magnitude and then when we uh, get the equation for the magnitude we can determine we can now determine the direction by uh, using our you know uh, fundamental law of attraction that like charges repair like charges attract so if they are like charges you know which way they go if they are unlike charges you know which way uh, they go okay so we can always uh, it's always easier to, to use the equation for the magnitude and not uh, worry our head with uh, the the vector form of uh, the the equation so that's just like i was saying so we can then use the like charges repel the opposite charges attract uh, rule to figure out the direction of the force. Okay, so don't put out your head with a vector form. Oh, where is the direction? Ah, then no, just use your F is equal to KQ1, Q2 over R squared. You obtain your magnitude. You want to know the direction, consider the, uh, the, 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 the polarity of the charges you are given. So if they are like charges, or suppose uh, a charge is uh, uh, two, uh, a positive charge is two Q, or a negative charge is one Q, of course you know the one with a stronger force of attraction. So you know the direction it will go to. And if the two charges are uh, of uh, the same polarity, they are similar charges, of course you know they will repel and go uh, either way. All right, so you don't have to really bother your head about the vector. All right, so that's just that about um, what the Coulomb's law says. However, just like I was saying before, uh, there is uh, this uh, similarity, okay, this likeness uh, between the, the Coulomb's law and the universal law of gravitation that, uh, that we know. Right? So uh, I said here that you should note that the form uh, for Coulomb's law is exactly the same as the gravitational force between two masses. Okay, when you have uh, two masses placed in a gravitational field, we say that th there is a force of attraction between those two masses. Remember? Yes, there is a force of attraction. And according to uh, Newton's universal law of gravitation, it says that the force of attraction between two masses placed in a gravitational field is directly proportional to the product of the masses and also inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart. So it looks very similar to the Coulomb's law. And so. We have the universal law of gravitation here. F is equal to G M1 M2 over R square. If, as a matter of fact, uh, I always encourage students not to really uh, bother your head trying to cram uh, universal law of gravitation at the same time the Coulomb's law. It's unnecessary. If you know one, you know the other. The only thing you have to just keep in mind is that the universal law of gravitation is talking about masses placed in the gravitational field, and then the Coulomb's law is talking about charges placed in electric field. So. If you know the two are uh, one, you know the other. The only difference is that uh, their constant is different. We have K, uh, which we will still examine for that because there's something we call the permittivity of free space that we're going to have to talk about later. And then, but for universal law of gravitation, we have G, the constant of gravitation, capital G. Mind you, that G is different from your acceleration due to gravity, small g. Okay, I'm sure you know. We're going to just have to talk about all of that uh, later when the need arises. All right, so you have to just know the big difference. There is only one sign for mass of attraction, M1, M2. That's the major difference, of course. Uh, because for charges, you have positive, you have negative, you may have negative, negative, you may have positive, positive, you may have positive and negative. But for masses, masses, they usually have the same charge. Probably, we even say they don't have a charge. Masses don't carry charge, really. And uh, if we think they do, they carry the same charge. All right, so that's just, that might just be the major difference okay and then uh, that will show if if we are trying to write the vector form because uh, the masses will not be trying to repel they will only be trying to attract okay so that's what we have so g there g in this uh, universal law of gravitation of course is equivalent to the k that we have in the coulomb's law okay and then of course the mass we have here is equivalent to the q that we have in the Coulomb's law. So they are very, very similar. So if you already know one, then you may not really have to bother your head uh, cramming or trying to memorize the other. Okay, so uh, that's just the similarity between the Coulomb's law and then uh, the, the universal law of gravitation. You should also note that uh, the mass is an intrinsic property of matter. Now, what do I mean by intrinsic? It's, it, it's peculiar to matter because, you know, uh, you, we always define matter as uh, uh, anything that uh, has mass and occupies space. Mind you, it's not anything that has weight, okay? 
because uh, it's commonly defined as anything that has weight. There's a difference between mass and weight. Okay, weight is a measure of the gravitational pull uh, uh, of the heart on the body, and then the mass is uh, the quantity of uh, matter in a given substance. So. Uh, uh, the mass is always an intrinsic property of matter. Likewise, charge is also an intrinsic property. It's peculiar to that particular uh, charge alone. Okay, so you should also note that and uh, seriously keep it in mind. Now, we only know it exists and can learn its property because of the force it exerts. Okay, they, they are not uh, really feasible. They are not a uh, tangible item that we hold and say, oh, this is uh, the charge. Oh, this is a, a particular mass in the gravitational field. This is a particular charge. No, we don't really uh, get to see them, uh, uh, I mean, vividly. But we know that they do exist because of uh, uh, their properties and because of the force they exact on, you know, the object, the items, similar charges around them. So it's this effect, the, uh, the measure of this effect that gives us the conviction uh, that they actually exist. Not that uh, we really can see them. Like somebody was asking me uh, that uh, I should show, uh, show him uh, uh, an example of a charge. Uh, as if it's something I can hold in my hand uh, and show, right? So just keep that in mind. It's an intrinsic, uh, it's an intrinsic uh, property. Now, because it makes other equations easier to write, uh, uh, Coulomb's constant is actually written. All right, now I this is talking about the Coulomb's constant. I said because it makes other equations easier to write. Coulomb's constant is actually written as a this a permittivity of free space. Okay, I'm going to show us that equation. Uh, the equation this is written as a k is equal to k is equal to one over four pi e naught. 4 pi e naught, that constant that we were talking about. You know, we said our f is equal to k q1 uh, q2 over r squared. So the value of k is written as 1 over 4 pi e naught, where this e naught is called permittivity of a free space. Okay, so it's called the permittivity constant. Now I was talking about the permittivity uh, a while ago. All right, so the full Coulomb's law. Is written as f is equal to 1 over 4 pi e naught q1 q2 over r squared. Uh, in most cases, it is written as q1 q2 over 4 pi e naught r squared. Of course, you know, if you multiply this by this, you're going to end up with q1 q2 over 4 pi e naught uh, r squared. So please quickly make a note of this, uh, this particular formula. Copy it down. You're going to need it often and often. f is equal to uh, q1 q2 over 4 pi e naught r squared where your e naught is the permittivity of free space like i told you earlier it's a constant you don't need to cram it it will always be be given all right so uh then uh, we have spherical conductors quickly to talk about uh because it's uh, it's conducting charge of uh, charge on a metal sphere we go everywhere over the surface when you have a spherical conductor when you have a charge on it it goes everywhere over the surface of the spherical conductor and you can easily see why because each of the charges push on the others uh, so that they all move apart as far as they can go okay so when you have spherical conductors charge on on a particular point will be spread uh, across uh, every surface on the on the conductor all right so that's the much time we actually permit us to take on uh, this episode of, of physics on school and hair and then uh, i have this uh, uh, assessment for you uh, one of them uh, it's actually an assignment for you to go home and find out what it's all about and then the other one of course we've talked uh, extensively uh, on it today so the first one says state the shares law state the shares law yeah I want you to get at work you go back and check your text read wide tell me what shares law is and how it applies to what we have talked about today and then you're going to also see how it relates with uh, the conductors and charges that we've talked about. And then state the Coulomb's law and write its mathematical implication. You can send your answers, of course, to the address that you're going to have uh, right below your screen. It's on that note that I'm going to have to say goodbye on this episode of Physics on School and Here. Till I come your way on another exciting episode, uh, enjoy yourself and keep working hard. Bye-bye.